it can be really challenging for a lot of people to go to a doctor or a therapist. It can be hard to share the things that are going on with you because for a lot of us, it can bring up embarrassment or even shame. But it's a really important part of honoring yourself and even for your overall healing. But what do you do when you just can't bring yourself to do the things that you need to do in that regard? Well, let's talk about it. Welcome, I'm Peggy Oliveira. Thank you for joining me. I've talked about different pieces of this in probably a handful of videos at least, um, but somebody had asked a question on another video relatively recently, and I was gonna try to point her in to the other video that I've done, but I couldn't find it. So I thought, well, maybe it's time to do a new one. So being able to share the things that are going on with us. It really is something I think that a lot of people struggle with generally across the board. For people that have experienced interpersonal trauma, it can be a lot more complicated, but it's a really important part of you being able to get the care, the support, the medical attention, the resources that you really not only need, but deserve. So let's talk a little bit about the struggle, but then also something to remember to help you stay grounded as you go into these types of experiences. So the struggle comes from, as I said, shame and embarrassment, but where does that really come from? Well, for survivors of childhood trauma, in particular sexual trauma and physical trauma too, um, to an extent, we are often so disconnected and ashamed of our bodies and what's happening inside our bodies in terms of function and feeling. And so we tend to be pretty disconnected to protect ourselves in a way, as a way of coping. And when we are struggling with something, um, and it could be something like a going to the dentist, it could be something with a therapist, it could be some, having some sort of medical issue, and you might be afraid that you won't be able to express it kind of appropriately, you might be afraid that you won't be believed, that's a big one, especially when it comes to like discomfort and pain. Um, you might think that the thing you're struggling with is something that is very unusual and other people don't struggle with it. You might even think that you struggle with it because you deserve to struggle with it because of what you did at, within the abuse. Now, I want to be clear, you didn't do anything, but we hold on to that responsibility and we can feel sometimes like that our discomfort, our pain can be almost a punishment for that thing that we believe that we did. And we don't want to share that with somebody else because they may see that part of us as well. So um, there can be some different things and there's certainly more options than just what I've shared. So there can be a variety of reasons that play into that difficulty. There can also be, depending on the nature of the type of appointment or person that you're seeing, some specific sorts of things that can be really triggering to trauma. So some obvious ones are like a gynecologist or a urologist, um, or even a, um, oh my goodness, I can't think of um, who that doctor is that does colonoscopies, oh my gosh. Um, those kinds of things can be a little bit more obvious dentist, um, but really any sort of doctor, like talking about um, your heart racing, like sometimes people will think that it's just anxiety and I need to deal with it better and I don't want this person to think that I'm crazy or something like that. Digestive issues can be really difficult. Gastroenterologist is the person I was thinking of. Um, digestive issues can be particularly difficult because we often tend to have a lot of shame around that, um, which we shouldn't, but we do. And so it can be difficult, it can be embarrassing to talk about that kind of stuff. 
but even simple things like headaches or an injury even. And when you don't talk about it, it not only reinforces that it's not okay to talk about, but oftentimes, depending on what the situation is, you end up making the situation worse, more complicated. You might be able to get treatment for something at that particular time that would be really relatively insignificant. You feel better really quickly. But if you don't talk about it, in some circumstances, it can lead to really, really bad things happening. So it is really important to be able to talk with your doctor, your dentist, your therapist about the things that are going on with you um, so that you can hopefully prevent that. And that kind of goes along with the video that I shared over the last few weeks or so in terms of not having regrets as you move through this healing process. So um, with particular kinds of doctors and certain types of tests or procedures and that sort of thing, it can be incredibly triggering. So for example, with a gynecologist, I think it seems probably pretty obvious what might be traumatizing about that. And people can feel really embarrassed and ashamed for their response, for being triggered and what that ends up looking like in that situation. And so people will not go or they'll go and then feel absolutely horrible, maybe even go through with it, maybe not talk about the thing that's really bothering them or go through with it, have an exam, and then be traumatized for quite some time afterward, having all those old beliefs and memories come back to the surface, reinforcing so many harmful things. So, and this happens a lot with dentists as well. Um, but again, it can happen across the board. It could potentially even happen with an eye doctor. Um, so being able to be honest and upfront with your person, whoever that happens to be, is so incredibly important. And being able to do that is a practice like pretty much everything along this healing journey. You're not gonna go from feeling a tremendous amount of shame and not being able to acknowledge what's going on with you to hearing this video or watching this video and letting it absorb for the next 24 hours and magically be able to go into your doctor and do all the things that you really need to do for yourself. It's not really the way it works. I wish it did, but it's not really the way that it works. But hopefully hearing this, along with the other things that you're doing for healing, can help you accept that maybe it really is possible that the thing that you feel embarrassed or ashamed of isn't something for you to feel embarrassed or ashamed of. That maybe it really is possible that you can go in and talk to your doctor and share what's going on with you and that person will believe you that person will want to try to help you. Um, that you can share things and get the kind of treatment that you need. That you can be okay. That you won't be judged. That is such a big fear for so many people. They worry that they're going to get upset or something and that the doctor or the dentist is going to either freak out and not know what to do or be really um, like punitive or dismissive of the struggle that you're having. And I wanna be clear, I recognize that that absolutely can happen. And it's part of the reason why I believe that it's really important that we understand ourselves and work toward being able to use our voice so that we can advocate for ourselves and this is true in all kinds of circumstances in our lives, with a partner, with a parent or another family member, in our work relationships and circumstances, and with other people in the community. The more grounded we are in ourselves, the easier that becomes. So I do think, ideally, what you would be able to do is 
you have to first recognize it within yourself that yes, I get really anxious, I get really nervous, I feel ashamed, whatever it is. Being able to acknowledge that within yourself. And then you can talk with the doctor or the person that you talk to when you're making the appointment. You can share whatever it is that's going on. So for example, if you're struggling with some sort of symptom, you can tell the person when you schedule that I'm having this sort of symptom, um, I'm not really sure what's going on, but I need to talk to the doctor about this. So that will already be documented, or at least it likely will be documented um, when you go in. Sometimes they may not see that, that can be overlooked. Ideally, you would bring it up again. If they don't, you see it as evidence that you shouldn't have brought it up to begin with, which is unfortunate. But you can actually bring it up in the appointment as well. So being able to say, I have been having a lot of problems with my stomach, or I haven't been able to have a bowel movement in this amount of time, or I'm having, you know, I feel like I need to throw up all the time, whatever it is. Being able to be very kind of direct about what's going on, because I feel really confident in being able to say, your doctor or your therapist or your dentist, whoever it is, has heard it before. You will not be the first person who has shared with them that you're having that particular sort of issue. Unless it's a brand new doctor, you're not going to be the first person that has shared this with them. So that's really important to keep in mind because we often feel like it's our issue and nobody else struggles with this and that says something about who I am, right? So you're not the first person. Also, that doctor, dentist, therapist, whoever it is, they likely went into the work that they're doing because they want to help you. And they can only help you to the degree in which they know you're having an issue. Now, really think about that. If you go in and you haven't had a bowel movement for weeks or whatever, and you say to the doctor, well, my stomach doesn't feel good every once in a while. Um, they're going to ask you different questions. You're going to give them answers, maybe truthful answers, maybe not entirely truthful because you feel embarrassed or ashamed or you decided you don't want any further testing or anything. So they're going to only be able to view those symptoms through the lens of, well, this isn't an issue, this isn't an issue, this isn't an issue. So they're narrowing it down and saying, okay, well, this is all I'm left with. Well, if you were be able to be honest with them up front, they could tell you, they would have a better understanding of the full picture so they would have more available to them to make sense out of what might be going on. This is a huge thing when it comes to women's health and gynecology. Um, if you're only going off of one relatively minor symptom, but in reality you're having a lot of other symptoms or that symptom is much more significant, the doctor isn't going to know that, especially if you're not being honest with them when they're asking you questions. The doctor is going to believe you. So if you say, no, that's not a problem, no, that's not a problem, no, that's not a problem, then they're narrowing it down to what the issue potentially could be. And sometimes the issue is like, I don't know what this issue is and come back if it continues. And one of the really difficult things about that is, aside from you not getting the treatment you need, is that it leaves you feeling dismissed, which makes sense. But at the same time, if they don't have all the information, there's only so much they can do. As a therapist, I had this happen probably quite often. And sometimes eventually people would be honest with me. And I'm not suggesting that people are lying. I completely understand why this happens and it's not to judge anybody. I've done it myself. Um, but if we don't know the whole picture, we can't assess from that whole, we're assessing just bit, based on little bits and pieces, or maybe one little bit. And if you don't have the whole picture, you can't possibly kind of diagnose in a sense what the problem might be. So it is really important to be able to do that. So for example, in the case of like a dentist, 
If you know that when you go to the dentist, um, you feel really anxious and your heart is racing and you feel really nauseous going into it and therefore you probably become dehydrated and maybe you even take something legal or otherwise to help you feel a little bit calmer when you go in and you go through the process whatever that process is and you leave and then for a few days you feel really bad well if your dentist doesn't know any of that then they're going to assume and ideally they would ask but we're not always completely honest because we feel bad but it, some of them don't ask. And so you go into that and if you're taking anything and they don't know about it, that could be potentially very dangerous. Um, but they're not aware that you're having any sort of issue. If you're not being honest with them about the significance of that toothache, then when they look at it, they're not necessarily going to feel the need to look deeply at every single tooth around it or at every tooth because it can be referred pain, they're not gonna necessarily do that if you're not telling them the significance of what that really means for you, that it's keeping you up at night, that you're not able to sleep, that everything makes it feel sensitive. If you say, well, occasionally I get this little pain, they're going to think about it a little bit differently. So, the point isn't that you go in and just be comfortable with everything. The point is that you honor yourself by going in and being able to say, I am really stressed out about this and um, can you do this or can you do that? Or please tell me I'm not the only one. Like sometimes you can even make a little light, you know, be light about it. and. Um, say, I'm sure, you know, I'm not the first person that you've seen and probably not even the first person you've seen today who struggles with being in that dental chair because you're probably not unless you're the first appointment of the day. A lot of dentists now, because people have spoken up um, and things that are changing in terms of dental school and trainings, a lot of dentists are automatically acknowledging that people can struggle and they will offer different kinds of things to help people feel relaxed. I wish gynecologists would start to do that as well. Um, but when you go in and you can talk about, I'm feeling really anxious about this. And sometimes you don't even necessarily have to tell them why. You can just say, I'm feeling really anxious. And um, so I tend to get really tense or I'm, you know, it might be really difficult for me to hold my mouth open or it might be difficult to do this exam, whatever it is. Doctors, generally speaking, the majority by far, I believe, are going to not only be open to what you have to say, but will so appreciate you saying it. Because when they know, then they can do the work that they need to do, that they want to be able to offer to you. For example, recently um, I ended up going to physical therapy. I've shared this before that one of the lingering things from my trauma is I have a really tight hips and I sometimes have quite a bit of hip pain and leg pain. And recently it's kind of started bothering me quite a bit and I ended up going to physical therapy and she asked me about like when the pain originated and stuff like that and it goes back a ways and she said she asked me a question I don't remember exactly what it was and I said for the well I wouldn't say the first time but I was able to say to her very easily that I know that a lot of it comes from childhood trauma and I think I actually specifically said sexual trauma because because the, of the nature of sexual trauma there's more tied to pelvic floors and hips and legs and that sort of thing. Um, doesn't mean that it doesn't apply to other people or other situations, but I acknowledge that. And she probably, she seemed relatively young. She probably doesn't have a whole lot of experience with people telling her that, probably doesn't even have a lot of training around that. But with what I was able to share with her, she recognized the chronic nature of this 
And I think that that is helpful for her to have that information, not only helpful for my own experience with her, but probably helpful going forward as well. Now, I'm not suggesting that people need to educate the person that they are with, but again, going back to what I said about with dentists and more training and with people speaking up, they offer the sedation and stuff like that. It really does start because people start speaking up and then it furthers into their education process and training and stuff like that. And so when we can speak up for ourselves, we are naturally also bringing awareness to that person, helping other people down the road as well. And most practitioners are going to be incredibly appreciative of that. So when I talk about feeling grounded, that is something that I want you to be able to really consider. You're not a burden. You're not a problem. You're not dysfunctional or weird or damaged. You're a human who is struggling with this. And in being honest with whoever that is about that, you are doing something really important for helping yourself and your healing. So in that moment, you're helping yourself, but you're also helping yourself along the whole process of your healing journey. You are also helping that practitioner as they work with people long after they're no longer working with you. The more of us who can be honest about different types of issues, the more awareness, understanding, and education people receive. And that is really important. Before people talked about childhood sexual abuse, nobody in the medical field understood how that could show up. The only thing that they would do typically when sexual abuse came up or they found out that somebody had a history of sexual abuse is immediately diagnose them early on. It would have been something like histrionic personality disorder or something. Um, And then ultimately PTSD, which is still not generally a fully accurate diagnosis. Um, But that was it. That was the extent of it. But the more that people talked about it, the more interest there was in understanding it. And now, slowly, it is becoming more of something that people are learning about. So um, the idea of being grounded in that, you're not damaged and all of that. And by you speaking up, you're honoring yourself, you are participating in your healing journey. You are doing healthy things for you along this healing journey. You are honoring all those parts of yourself that have not felt good, that have hurt, that have been in pain, that have struggled. You're giving voice to all those parts of yourself. And that too is an important part of healing. Practicing using your voice is not easy. It can be incredibly challenging. The feelings and the emotions and the physiological response that it can bring up can sometimes be terrifying. But you deserve to get the treatment, the care, and the support that you need. Your mind needs that, your body needs that, and your heart needs that. There is nothing to be ashamed of, whether it's that you struggle in terms of being triggered, whether it's the symptom that you're having. There is nothing for you to be ashamed of. And I feel so confidently that I can say that I guarantee that you are not the only one who struggles with whatever that is. You may not have heard anybody ever talk about it before, but it doesn't mean that it's not there. And you deserve to be well. You deserve to get the medication, get the treatment, get the support that you need. So being able to share with your doctor or your therapist or whatever it is, share with them that you struggle with it. 
And if they ask why, you can say, I don't know. I just know that when I'm holding my mouth open for that long, it can really like cause me to have a panic attack or something along that line. Um, you don't have to get into the details. It doesn't mean that you can't or shouldn't share more, but you don't have to. And I think sometimes people feel like they're obligated to share more and you're not. You can even say, you know what? I really don't feel like I can do that test today. Can I maybe come back another day? Or I wasn't prepared to do that today. Can I come back another day? Can I give it some thought? And I know that's not easy to do. But being grounded in the truth that it is okay for you to do that is what I really want you to consider. Being grounded in the truth that it's part of your healing. Being grounded in the truth that you deserve to be seen. Because when you are grounded in that truth, you can easily say to your physical therapist, your dentist, your doctor, whomever, yeah, that doesn't feel good and I know that it comes from this. Or no, I don't want you to do that. I'm not comfortable with that. Can I have somebody else in the room? Can somebody hold my hand? There's a lot of things that you can do that you have a right to say, to do, to ask for. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Can you relate to anything that I shared? Does it feel overwhelming to think about doing it? Maybe you've already done some of it. It really is incredibly scary and incredibly empowering to be able to do that. I'd love to hear from you. Share in the comments. Thanks so much for being here. I will look forward to seeing you next time.